to the cloud. So I think, I think that's going to go to um, your Zoom account. So we'll see. Okay. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Um, welcome to tonight's webinar on nutrition for prevention. Um, we're going to focus on how to lower inflammation, boost immunity, and find the right nutrition plan for you. So um, I would like to set an intention before um, we do anything. So our intention for um, the webinar um, tonight is to um, be present. Um, if everyone could mute their microphone, that would be awesome. Um, you know, turn off, you know, cell phones, close other browsers. Um, maybe you want to take some notes. So maybe take a moment and go grab um, a pen, a notebook, something like that, and just get comfy, um, get ready to absorb some information, and um, we'll dive in. So I wanted to kind of go over what we're going to be covering today. So we're going to go over um, how to use nutrition as the foundation of your prevention plan to lower inflammation, boost your immune system, um, balance your hormones, and find the right plan for you. Um, and just the key word here is the foundation of your prevention plan. So, um, you know, there's so much more that goes into it. And that's why I love, you know, being a part of Pink Warrior House and all the incredible work um, that they're doing, because it's really not just, you know, nutrition and our physical bodies, there's our whole emotional, energetic body and so much that goes into our well being. And all of those um, parts of ourselves really are important to create health and harmony and alignment in our life going forward after breast cancer. But nutrition is that foundational piece that really just kind of like puts everything into place and it creates a really strong foundation for all those other parts to kind of work more synergistically. So it actually brings, you know, more harmony into your life going forward. So we're also going to talk about um, the root cause and like what's happening in your body on a cellular level. And then I'm going to give you guys some um, simple shifts that you can make right now to um, help you feel confident in how you're supporting your body to prevent recurrence. So I'll just share a little bit more about me so you know who is giving you this presentation tonight. So my name is Lauren. Um, I used to work in corporate accounting you know, classic story. I was stressed out, burnt out. I worked a lot. I didn't like what I was doing. Um, at this time in my life, you know, I had been plagued by eating disorders for like close to a decade. I hid a lot of pain that I was in from people. Um, I overexercised. I was living a lifestyle that was just like really out of alignment with my true self. And, you know, on the outside, it looked like I had it all together. I had this good job and made good money. I looked healthy, all these things. Um, but I was diagnosed with breast cancer um, just before my 27th birthday. And we're coming up on um, almost eight years ago now. So um, pretty excited. <laughs> so I had a lumpectomy, chemotherapy, radiation. And it was um, right before radiation started that I learned about natural medicine. I had never heard of anything like this before. Um, it's kind of a miracle of how I even was led to more of a holistic um, route, but that's, you know, story for another day. But I started working with this naturopath and um, I have really fair skin. The lighting in here is like kind of flattering, so you can't really tell, but I'm very fair skinned and um, my skin didn't really burn from radiation. And that was just like a, a huge thing for me. Like I was so scared because I've seen pictures, you know, of what was happening to people's breasts. And I was just so afraid that that was going to happen to me because I was so pale. You can kind of see it actually, like in this picture, like my skin's like a little red. Um, like it was by the end of like my 25 or 28 sessions, like it was red, but I wasn't like, you know, peeling. I didn't have any sores. Like I was just amazed that um, my skin just didn't burn like, because I was so pale. So I just was like, okay, well, this is pretty cool. Like I'm kind of obsessed with like this natural realm. This is really cool. Like using it in conjunction with, you know, my, what my doctor had planned out for me. Um, so I, I continued with my naturopath, you know, after treatment ended and I just didn't love that. Like I was seeing her every three months. I was like wanting to do something every day. Like I was now I'm like more of like a recovered type A personality. But at this time, you know, eight years ago, I was um, just like really like trying to control everything, including, you know, it's coming from like this place of like, I want to be super healthy and prevent recurrence. But now, you know, I really understand that it was coming from like a fear-based place. Um, but 
I just really wanted to do more for myself. Um, and I was just obsessed with food. I was just like, I can, I eat every day. So this is where I want to start. So I just became obsessed with learning more about foods. Um, I eventually enrolled in holistic nutrition school and left accounting. Um, and I actually chose to come off tamoxifen, um, and manage my breast cancer prevention plan completely naturally. And I just, you know, say that cause it's part of my journey. Um, it's part of how I live my life in alignment with my truth. Um, that's not everyone's path, you know, and I work with clients, you know, all over the world and like 90 to 95% of them are on some sort of adjunctive, um, hormonal medication. It's all about, optimizing your path for you. And no matter what path you're on, um, nutrition is foundational. And, you know, some of the other things that I do with my clients as well can really help create more synergy with something like tamoxifen, for example, and, um, help enhance its effects and, um, reduce and mitigate side effects and all of that good stuff. So it's really just about, you know, working with the plan that you're on and feeling confident in the plan that you're on and doing what you can take control of. And, um, from a place of love, health, and alignment, and from like a really, um, you know, loving intention versus a fear-based intention and really, um, creating that holistic plan for yourself. So I just wanted to say that there. Um, but yeah, so I eventually left my career in accounting, went to holistic nutrition school. Um, then I worked at the leading naturopathic oncology clinic just outside of Toronto. And I founded my company, Breast Cancer Thriver. And now my practice is exclusively online. Um, and I work with breast cancer survivors to um, inside a 12 week uh, container where we do like a deep dive. It's like a whole physical, emotional, spiritual transformation to um, really heal from the inside out and like have dominion over your life again and create the life that you want. It's pretty cool. So you guys can let me know in the chat if you feel called, make it a little bit more interactive because I would at this point still want to keep your, your mics off. Um, but I want to know, like, why are you signed up for this webinar today? Are you maybe, let me know if any of this resonates with you. Are you just like overwhelmed with knowing where to start in terms of nutrition? Are you confused by some of the conflicting information? Are you struggling with consistency? Are you worrying about like all the holidays coming up and like all like the, the indulgences that are kind of coming your way? I would love to know. Um, and you can also let me know if you just like are spending a lot of time researching on your own, um, trying to figure it all out and just like kind of not coming up with um, the answers that you want. Um, or maybe you just like want to do everything you can, you want to learn more about what you can do um, to prevent recurrence. Like those are all like wonderful, wonderful reasons to um, be on the call today. So I'm just going to quickly pop in the chat. No messages, but that's okay. You're all here. So I'm excited that you're here. So um, I'm going to talk now about the first goal of the evening. Um, we're going to use nutrition to lower inflammation. And then at the end of this little section, I will pause for questions. So if anyone um, has anything, they can um, unmute, unmute at that time. So um, let's dive into this first little bit, lowering inflammation. So when it comes to preventing breast cancer with nutrition, the first thing you would do is start with an anti-inflammatory diet. And there are nuanced differences, which I'll get into later when we talk about how to find the right nutrition plan for you. Um, but there are some essentials that apply across the board, no matter what you're doing. And I always use the example of like the vegan diet or the keto diet, because there is so much evidence-based research supporting the health benefits of a vegan diet for breast cancer prevention. But there is so much evidence supporting the benefits of a keto diet for breast cancer prevention, but they're polar opposites, right? So it gets really, really confusing. But at the end of the day, no matter what you're doing, there are some essential there. Every single one of those nutrition plans is designed to lower inflammation in their own unique way. So we want to focus on lowering inflammation. So I'm going to teach you tonight some of the things that um, apply across the board, no matter what plan you're doing, or if you're just like vegan, keto, paleo, like hybrid, intuitive eating, like eating what feels good, like whatever it is, like these are things that apply no matter what. So that's where we're going to start. So first thing is we want to talk about sugar. Um, you know, it's not 
everyone's favorite thing to learn about because we all sometimes like to hold on to um, some of the things that we love. But I want to say that I love dessert. I am such like a sweet tooth. I make dessert all the time. So it's still very much like a part of my life just in a really holistic way. So we're going to talk about that. Um, but I really want you to understand just like why it's important to have a shift in your mindset around sugar. So that way you can start to make more um, informed and empowered choices about when you're going to indulge. I don't even like to say the word indulge because it's not an indulgence. To me, it's just living its life. <laughs> but um, just in the, maybe while you're in this transition phase of like reframing your mindset around it, it's just really important to kind of know like the roots of like what's actually happening to your body on a cellular level when you consume this stuff. So that way it can make it easier to um, make a choice to have it in love and reverence or be like, actually, no, I don't want that today. So let's get into it. Um, sugar, you know, it's, I would say it's one of the most inflammatory substances we can put into our bodies. Um, you know, it is inflammatory and it has, you know, ties to like every chronic illness, but it's super connected to heart disease and cancer. So you may have heard that sugar feeds cancer, which is true, but indirectly. And this is where we're going to spend like the most of our time today. Cause if there's, there's two things that I really want you to take away um, from this presentation, and this is one of them. So when breast cancer cells become rogue, they differentiate themselves from regular healthy cells. And like, we know this, like when we received our diagnosis, we received like a stage and we received a grade. The grade is like how differentiated those breast cancer cells are from normal healthy cells. So one of the ways that these cancer cells differ, they differ in many ways, but this is one of the most important ones is that they actually develop up to 10 times more insulin receptors than normal healthy breast cells. So this is really, really important because when you, let's say, eat something that um, has a rapid release of sugar, let's say you just ate like a pile of gummy worms, like sour gummy worms, okay? Like you ate a bunch of that, that's gonna have like a really, really rapid release of insulin. And if you have these cells that have like 10 times the amount of mouths on them than like your regular cells, then they're gonna get that energy like a lot faster. So what I want to make super clear is that like your body, our cells, unless you're on the ketogenic diet, like all of our cells like use sugar for energy. It's normal. Like that is literally how we are designed, like biologically, like that is a normal thing. So I don't want you to freak out like by like, oh my God, like the carbs and the sugar and sweet potatoes, like all this stuff, like our bodies are designed to run on sugar. So it's like a normal thing. The thing is, is that when we have these cancer cells that can consume that sugar as energy 10 times faster, that means they can grow, you know, 10 times faster than our regular cells. So it's really just about understanding that we have to slow the release of the insulin from our food because our food releases sugars, which we, our bodies use as energy. Like that's like, that's facts. That's, that's normal stuff. That's, that's just what we want, but we don't want to have these like super like rapid releases because that's what creates the the feeding frenzy so it's not so much like we want to stop insulin from happening like that's impossible unless you go ketogenic which many of us aren't going to do so we have to work with our food to make it not as like spikes like dips and valleys we want to have a nice slow release so that's what we're going to talk about so just want to make that super, super um, clear. I'm trying to move this bar. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's on my, my way. So hopefully that's cool. Um, but anyways, and like I see a question in the chat, so I will um, open the floor for questions once I finish this in a few minutes. But that's just really what I want to, to drive home is that like our bodies use sugar in our food as energy. It's normal. Cancer cells also use it for energy, but they can get that energy 10 times faster. So the goal with using nutrition is to slow the way those sugars are released. That's all we're trying to do. So people get really freaked out by this and they're like, oh my God, I can't have sweet potatoes. I can't have fruit, all this stuff. You absolutely can. It's because having a strawberry or even like a pile of strawberries is not going to have the same effect in terms of insulin being released as eating like a big pile of 
white pasta or a big pile of candy, for example, it's not going to have the same. And we're going to talk about, you know, why um, in a minute on the next slide or two, but I, so I don't want you to worry if you're having like carbohydrates and things like that. Like this is how our bodies are designed. It's really just about now working with that. So we can eat in a way that's more supportive overall to breast cancer prevention recurrence. So hopefully that's clear and I'll get to some questions, um, you know, in a minute. So, um, the one thing that I want to kind of say here, we're going to get into some quick tips, but I don't like the word remove here. Um, I really want to iterate that I don't want any part of life after breast cancer to feel like restrictive in any way. Like you're not restricted in your food. You're not restricted in your move. You're not restricted in your life. Like I literally have a sticker like on my wall behind me that says your desires are your destiny. Okay. Like I don't want you to be restricted in any way. You get to create the life that you want from this point forward. Like you are um, the conscious creator of your experience. So it's just about working with that. What I want to really iterate is that like, we get to make choices. Like life is just all about choices. And I, like I said, like I have a sweet tooth. I make dessert all the time. Every time I go to a friend's house, I pretty much bring over brownies. Like I bring over like a apple crisp. Like I, I love to bake. So I bring stuff when I go to people's houses, I love dessert and that's what I love to bring. So it's about making informed, conscious and empowered choices. So that way, if you do have something, you're like, yeah, I want that. And I'm choosing to do it versus being like, actually, maybe I don't want to do that. So it's really just about um, really shifting the mindset from like, oh, I can't have sugar. I can't have this. I can't have that. I can't have this pasta. I can't have this pizza. Like none of that restricted energy. It's about like, oh, I understand how this affects my body on a cellular, cellular level. I'm going to choose to eat this instead, because that's more in alignment with how I want to feel and how I want to live my life going forward. So I don't want you to see it as like restriction. I want you to see it as an act of self-love. And like I said, like nothing's ever off the table. It's just about making more informed and empowered choices. So that definitely want that to come across. And then the quick tip, you know, is to apply what I call the PFF principle that stands for protein, fat, and fiber. So that's how we can work with our food. If we add protein, fat, and fiber to the sugars that we're eating, like the carbohydrates in our food, it naturally slows the release of the insulin. So using the example of like the plate of pasta that I brought up, um, may or may not be going out for Italian tomorrow night. Um, it's on my mind. Like adding some chicken to that pasta, for example, is a great way. Now you're adding more protein. So there's something else with the pasta to slow down the release of the sugars from the food. So adding avocado to um, avocado toast, for example, maybe some hemp parts, something like that. So you're adding more protein and you're adding some fat to it. So it's really just about getting in the mindset of like, how can I add like, what can I add to this to make this more supportive for me? So that's how I look at my food. Um, so I love like avocado and I love hemp parts and I love like tahini dressing. So those are really easy ways that I always add like more fat to whatever it is that I'm eating. Um, and then, you know, just kind of being mindful of like reading labels and looking for things that maybe um, are sweetened with like raw honey or maple syrup or something like that. So those are just kind of, um, you know, my suggestions that you can start right now that are like really relatively simple, I feel, um, and just kind of working them into your life. So really seeing that these aren't um, restrictive, you can have anything you want, but it's really just about the informed, empowered, conscious choice, and then applying the, pre the PFF principle um, when you can. So um, I'm going to pop into the chat. Um, okay, I don't want to read all of this right now. It looks like really specific about supplements and things. It was messaged directly to me. So I'm not going to read that right now. Um, I just, if you're going to pop something in the chat, just going to be like a short, um, like really clear question. Um, that would be helpful just so I can like read it and answer. Um, does anyone have any questions right now? Feel free to unmute. Um, I'll wait a minute and then I will um, move on. All right, we'll move on. Um, if you decide. Hey, Lauren. 
Oh yeah. Hi. I'm so sorry. It's Allison. Um, so just real quick regarding the person who did reach out to you in the chat directly, will you get back with them later with the specific answers for things? Yeah, I honestly, I didn't even read it. Cause like my brain can't process that it was like a paragraph. So whoever sure. you were, my Instagram will be, um, at the end, just literally DM that to me on Instagram. And I can reply to you another time. I just like, I can't read it right now. Um, it's just like my brain just can't process that. So, um, but yeah, you can send me um, a message and you can totally, I can get back to you later. I'll put my Instagram. Um, it's on the last slide. Um, awesome. Anyone Thank else? You. I just wanted to make sure we had an option there. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, of course, for sure. Um, so whoever messaged me, I'm sorry. I just, I can't read that right now. I want to be mindful of the time. So, um, but anyone else have any questions? Feel free to um, unmute, um, but we'll move forward in the meantime. Um, so we're going to pop into um, goal number two, which is boosting um, immunity. So, um, you know, we learned just a minute ago about how we can lower inflammation by lowering total insulin. Like it's one of those things that we just want to be really mindful of because insulin is, you know, super inflammatory. So what I'm going to teach you now um, also lowers inflammation, but I wanted to put it under the immunity category instead, just to like break it out separately. But like, you know, for anyone who wants to follow me on Instagram after or listen to my podcast, um, I'm always talking about ways that you can lower inflammation. It's like literally, it's all I talk about. It's like my soapbox that I'm constantly, you know, standing on. Um, and nutrition is just like one of the ways um, that we do that. And I'm really actually passionate about how um, our mental health and our emotional health and our, our energetic health um, really need to be in harmony as well to um, really have this full picture of how to lower inflammation in our bodies. So um, super, super excited and passionate about that. And, you know, we're focusing on nutrition here, which is just as important. Like there isn't one, there isn't a hierarchy, you know, in terms of like how we lower inflammation, they're all different facets that are equally important. Um, but food is just like probably the most accessible. So that's why we we're going to focus here. So you can let me know in the chat. Um, did you know that 80% of your immune system is in your gut? So what you eat has a direct impact on your immune system. So, you know, we're going back to again here. Um, I don't want any of this to feel like restrictive in any way. It's just information that you, um, can use to make an informed and empowered decision about how you want to move forward. So, um, dairy is another thing that, um, you know, really creates, it can create inflammation in your body. Um, and it does impact immunity. So why this happens is because the human body just actually doesn't digest the sugar and milk lactose after about the age of nine, because we like just stop producing the enzyme. Um, so we don't digest it properly. And if we don't digest something properly, um, our immune system is like, this is a threat. We have to go neutralize this right now. So it's just taking resources and energy away from your immune system. And I'm just all about having all of my immune system's resources ready and available to like fight cancer cells or like, you know, just deal with some of the crap that's in our environment. You know, I want everything to be like available for that. Um, so again, just on this, like I have a really good like client example to illustrate this one. Um, you know, I don't know much about England. I have a lot of clients from the UK, but um, you know, people in England love their tea. So they're just really all about it. Um, and I had this one client who really wanted to be dairy free and she was for the most part, but like she like would drink like five or six cups of tea all day. Like that was like her jam. Like she would just always drink tea and she liked her tea with milk. And she tried like oat milk. She tried cashew milk. She tried coconut milk. She tried almond milk. She tried soy. She tried every type of milk you could possibly, or non-dairy milk you could try. And she just like, didn't enjoy the taste of her tea with milk. She's like, I like it in everything else. I'm fine with non-dairy alternatives. But with, when it comes to my tea, it's like ritualistic for me. Like I want my tea to be this way. Um, and she was like beating herself up because she like, couldn't be fully dairy free. And it's like, are you kidding me? Who cares? Like have your little bit of milk in your tea, right? Like, it's like, even if it was more, like I want everything to be empowered because really your, um, your energy, when you are digesting and metabolizing your food actually affects how you digest and metabolize your food. So if you're like drinking this like massive cup of milk and you're like, I love this milk, this is the best thing ever. You'll literally actually like 
use less resources from your like new immune system to like digest that dairy properly than if like you didn't do that. So like really just like making a present choice in alignment with your highest self is key. So again, like, I just don't want any of this to feel restrictive. So just want you to know it's totally okay. Just like be aware and then choose. That's it. That's really what life is about is just being aware and then making choices in alignment with your goals. So that's it. So for her, it was just a big reframe to be like, it's actually okay to have this bit of dairy. Like there's nothing inherently wrong with that. Um, and just, she was so excited. Like it like made her so happy that she like felt okay to have that. I'm like, yeah, of course you can. So anyways, that's that. Um, it's the same type of thing with gluten. Like I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but, um, it's just difficult for the human body to digest. And again, it can just take resources away from your immune system. Um, and I want all of your immune system resources, you know, readily available. So I'm not going to get into any of that, but, um, you know, really just iterating here that nothing about this, I want to feel restrictive. It's just information that you can do what you want with it, you know? Um, and just to use that information to make more informed and empowered and conscious choices. Um, and I brought them up today because like the gluten and the dairy, like the alternatives are really, really, really accessible. Um, like they're everywhere and they taste really good. Um, like I have this story when it was probably like 15 years ago, like I was in my first or second year of college and I was working at this cafe and there were these two girls I worked with and they were roommates and they were both celiac. And, you know, they lived in student housing, like it wasn't like super glamorous or anything like that. And um, they used to have this joke where like, if anybody like robbed them in their student house, that like the only thing they had of value was what was in their pantry or their fridge. Because back 15 years ago, like they had to special order like gluten-free wraps and things like that, because it just wasn't available at regular grocery stores. And it was so expensive. So times have changed. Um, these are really accessible. So I just share the information because, um, maybe you didn't know it before. And now if you're like shopping and you were going to buy like wraps, maybe now you'll just try a gluten-free one just to see, you know, um, cause you can be like, Oh, like I'm keeping more resources in my immune system now by having this wrap. So it's really just about, um, like making these, like this information, like really practical, um, and really easy to incorporate into your life going forward. Um, so does anyone have any questions about that? I can unmute. If not, I'll go forward. Okay, so um, this is really important. This is like my favorite thing to talk about. So it's really about finding the right nutrition plan for you. Um, because as you know, there's a lot of information out there a lot of it conflicts. Everyone says like their way is the best way. It's like, this is it. Um, but that creates so much confusion um, and overwhelm and stress and anxiety and all the things. Um, so what I shared with you so far are that like, no matter what nutrition plan you're on, so no matter who's telling you what, they're all, they all want you to lower inflammation. So they all want you to just have an anti-inflammatory diet. So regardless of you know, what type of plan that looks like for you, everything you learned so far today, you know, applies across the board. So if you were my client, for example, and you were um, keto, I would still want you to be uh, dairy free, for example, although that's technically like allowed under that type of diet, like I would still encourage uh, dairy free keto just because of what I shared with you about dairy and your immunity and inflammation, etc. So all of everything you learned so far, like I say to everybody across the board, and now it's really about finding like the nuanced plan that's really going to fit you and your body. So um, just kind of want to say here, like why there's so much conflicting information um, and why, you know, different nutrition plans will work for different people. It's like, how can there be like a whole body of research, research supporting veganism and a whole body of research supporting keto? Um, the, diff the reason is because we're all biochemically unique. Like we all have um, different DNA. We all have different um, levels of nutrients that we require to be at optimal health and to have optimal genetic expression because um, our genes are not our destiny. We actually have epigenetics and we get to influence the expression of our genes. We all process and metabolize food 
differently. We all have different um, energetic bodies. We, our stress levels and our hormone levels can change or are different for each person, but they can change, you know, day by day, especially, you know, as a woman, even if you are no longer menstruating, like you still have hormones that cycle on a daily basis. So um, there's so much that goes into like what you uniquely are going to need to thrive and be at your optimal level. So really getting that idea of comparing yourself to somebody else, like it doesn't actually serve you because we want to be looking at you and I want you to be empowered to know how to really tap into your own body's wisdom and listen to um, the cues that you're receiving. So the first thing would be like, you just have to have the knowledge to know how certain foods affect you on a cellular level. So that way you can start to make more informed choices. So hopefully today um, in this class gave you some more information so you can start to um, make more informed choices because that's really step one. And then step two is like how to connect to your body. So that way um, you can just pay attention to how you feel when you eat in a certain way. So you know, I put a very generic goal for you guys to all eat in a way that makes you feel energized and alive. Like that's, um, you know, we all just want to feel really good, energetic, you know, um, satiated, all of that. Maybe you also want to lose 10 pounds or whatever it is. So we just want to make sure that um, you're eating in a way that connects you to how you want to feel. And that includes like feeling amazing and losing 10 pounds, whatever it is. So how we do that is to listen to the feedback that we're receiving. So first, do we look at, you know, do you have any, like, can you go, how long can you go without eating? Are you hungry every three hours? Do you need a snack? Um, are you craving things that are salty? Are you craving things that are sweet? What time are you craving things at? Do you happen to lose energy at 3 p.m.? What happens when you have a coffee? What happens when you don't have a coffee? Do you feel bloated? Um, like all of these types of things are clues from your body that the way you're eating is either working or not working for you. So we have to look at the way you're eating. And then from there, look at, okay, now you're eating this way, what's actually happening. So as an example, um, let's say you after this webinar are like, I'm really empowered to make some shifts to my nutrition. I'm going to, you know, remove refined sugars. I'm going to be gluten-free and dairy-free. And I'm going to start there. Like you'll probably feel like pretty good just like doing that for a little while, but eventually we just kind of like plateau because the initial like feeling of like making those like baseline choices, it kind of like it, that's the first level. And then your body might tell you, oh, you know what? I'm really tired every day at like 1 PM or like I'm, cr I crash now, like 20 minutes after I have a coffee or I need a snack every three hours or whatever this is. So it's really about, okay, well you made these choices. Like you are now gluten-free, dairy-free, refined, sugar-free, cool. But now let's look at what your body's telling you and we tweak from there. So it's like, okay, um, you are craving food every couple of hours that like you need snacks often great. Let's try bumping up your protein. You're craving stuff. Great. Let's maybe do some more protein, some more fat earlier in the day. Let's reset your dopamine, like that type of thing. So it's really about, um, just looking at what your body's telling you and then using that as feedback to tweak accordingly until you find your sweet spot. Because what I do, like I can never pigeonhole a client into a right plan. Like I'm never going to teach you like, this is the way you have to eat and only this way. I want to empower you to really be connected to your body in that way. Like, cause your body's going to always shift. Like we're not meant to be these like rigid beings. Like we're so cyclical. So the way you eat can change over time. And I want you to be set up. So that way, when things shift, or if they shift, um, you're prepared and not stressed out again. Like, oh my God, like I, um, like I was eating so good, but now like, I just, I can't get this last 10 pounds off. Like, or I'm constantly craving things at night now. Like, I want you to know that that's just feedback that you can now play with and you're set up to know how to tweak that for you. If that makes sense. So I'll use myself as an example. Um, I used to be a really big proponent of intermittent fasting. I thought it was great for me and it was for a period of time. Um, but fasting, if not done when you are like in a state of like more like nervous system, um, relaxation, it actually causes a lot of dysregulation. So 
when I was in Mexico, when I was going through a big transition, um, fasting just wasn't working for me anymore. Um, and I knew that because my anxiety was so much higher. Um, I was getting cravings for things out of like, I was constantly craving sugar. It wasn't just like a afternoon thing or an evening thing. I was constantly craving sugar. Like the foods were always on my mind. Um, and I was just like more irritable and I started to have like some skin issues. So it was just fasting was causing me more harm than good. So I'm like, okay, time to tweak. So what I'm doing now um, feels amazing. And I don't know how long I'll be eating this way for, but I was intermittent fasting for like a good year and a half, two years. And it's just like, I was able to see right away when it wasn't working for anymore. And I had to pivot and do something different. So I just don't want you to ever feel like, like I keep saying, like life after breast cancer isn't about control and fear and rigidity and so often we hyper focus on food because it is something that we can control. But um, I'm very anti diet culture, you know, with my experience of eating disorders in the past and all of that. So it's really about um, being connected to your body and really um, being free and capable to trust the decisions that you're making about how you're nourishing yourself and that it truly is the best way for you. So um, I think I kind of touched on all of that. So uh, does anyone have any questions about that before um, we kind of do a quick recap and move into um, anything else? Kind of another little question and answer period. Hi, uh, I have a question. Sure. Okay, you were talking about uh, refined sugar. That means like all type of sugar, like, you know, I can have like brown sugar or jaggery or anything like that so i'm just gonna you know reflect back you said so i can't have you can have anything you can have brown sugar i'm not saying you can't i'm just saying that it could be exciting to maybe look at recipes that use maple syrup or honey or dates or something like that that have um like a lower um, I'm trying to think of the word, like, I don't want to say lower sugar profile, but that's basically what it is. It's just that like the, it's not like the concentration, it's just the way that it's released by your body. It's not going to have the same, um, effect on insulin, like raw honey or maple syrup won't have the same effect on insulin as brown sugar. Like brown sugar is going to release more, um, and quicker than, like me then maple syrup will maple syrup still will because it's a sugar and that's okay um but it's just it could be fun to just look for recipes that like oh like i didn't know that maybe now i'll try a recipe that like only uses this sweetener and just see if you like it you know so you can absolutely still have it i don't want you to feel like you can't especially if you have like this one recipe that you love it's like the thing you always make like you're known for it it uses brown sugar like go, go for it it's just like information that you can use yep. to try to find something now that's maybe more supportive for like the lifestyle that you want going forward that's all it is because you might want to make some choices so these are just ways you can make more informative ones does that make sense oh okay okay i get it because i only like chai tea so i just put a brown sugar not the that's the only thing i i'm trying to like you know uh get the chai but i don't want like you know but I am finding like, you know, alternative, like nothing so I can put it in or not the sugar. I can try something else, like, you know, whenever I'm craving for. Yeah. So like, when do you normally have it? Like, what's something that like you would have that you feel like you're going to miss out on right now? Uh, not always. I, whenever I feel like I am, like, I want a sugar, I just have like a date or uh, like nothing else or almonds or something i just find something alternative like you know if i'm craving for sugar i just need something else not a sugar thing okay so um i just want to make sure i understand like your question so like are you like looking for like a sugary kind of like substitute when you're craving something or are you looking for yes. like something you can have instead uh, or both, both. <laughs> or both okay so like i said like I am not opposed to like sugar in any way. I love things that are sweetened with dates. Um, and if you just were like, I want a date, I'm not gonna hate on you for having a date. You can totally, but if you wanted like 
a couple dates with some almonds. Like that's applying the PFF principle because now you're adding protein and fat from the nuts with the date. So it's still obviously going to release insulin into your body, but it's not going to be as quickly as if you didn't have the almonds with the date. So that's just something that if you like that, that's an easy snack for you when you're craving something. It's like, cool. Like maybe now you just have some almonds with your dates and that's a really simple solution that like meets you where you're at, you know? Okay. So, I, so I support something like that. Um, and, you know, it's kind of difficult to do on a call like this, but like when I work with my clients, like we kind of take it a step further where we kind of get into like what's contributing to the craving, um, really kind of, um, you know, doing something that is supportive for not like the elimination of it, but like just understanding like the, the neurochemistry of it. So we can try tweaking, you know, certain other things like that. But like I said, like after this webinar ends and like at eight o'clock PM for me, like I'm probably going to go have like a brownie that I made earlier today and that I, I sweetened them with honey, you know? So I don't feel oh. bad about having that. So it's like, <laughs> I, I love dessert. So it's a really like regular part of my life, but um, it's, so I don't feel bad about having it. It's just a present choice that I enjoy. So if you enjoy the dates, maybe have it with some almonds and you know, that's, that's a, a good spot. If you're looking for something like um, instead of just eating the dates, um, something that you might want to consider doing, um, is I like, I like, I always alter the recipes a little bit, but there's this blog that, um, I get a lot of like dessert recipes from it's called ambitious kitchen. And she does like a lot of like paleo type of stuff. So they tend to be a lot lower in sugar. And she has like a brownie recipe on there um, that I love. Like the ingredients are so simple. It's literally like almond butter, eggs, um, cocoa powder, baking soda, and honey. And I might be missing one other thing, but there's like not even flour in it and you bake it and it makes the most amazing brownie I've ever had in my life. I bring these everywhere I go. People are obsessed with them. Like people cannot believe that they're actually good for you. Um, and it doesn't really use a lot of sugar. So instead of maybe having dates and pistachios or dates and almonds, for example, that's still going to like release quite a bit of sugar, but slow down because of the nuts, maybe like once a week you make like a, not one, whatever, maybe you make like a, batch of these brownies for example and you can freeze them so that way when you want something you can just like pop one out of the freezer and it's there that way it's still satisfying a sweet tooth but it's not like like a whole bunch of dates you know so it's still like much less of like an insulin release does that make sense uh, yes it does so that, that's what I would do is like okay. quick fix dates plus nuts to slow the release of insulin like more um, prepared solution, like, and you have the time is to be pro more proactive solution, I should say, would be like, make something that you know, you enjoy, um, that's really freezer friendly. And that way, when you want something, it's there, and it satisfies the sweet tooth, but it's not like, as sweet as having dates. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions before we do a recap? Not from me. Okay, cool. Um, if you just don't mind muting again, that would be awesome. Um, and then I will just kind of move on. So um, we're basically at the end, um, but I just want to kind of recap what we've done so far. Um, so we really want to focus on using nutrition as the foundation of a comprehensive prevention plan. Um, and we really want to um, really make sure that we're dialing it in so that way we feel really good in our bodies, boost our immune system, and doing that through finding the best plan for you and your unique body and biochemistry. So um, we talked about what's happening on a cellular level um, in terms of the insulin receptors, the, um, the um, immune system resources, all that good stuff. Um, and we talked about some simple shifts you can make right now that will um, help you to just like build that momentum um, and have that momentum keep moving forward in your life so you can keep making um, really um, positive and informed choices. So, um, and the, you know, the biggest one I want you guys to remember is PFF, protein, fat, fiber. Um, just think of ways you can, you know, add that to your life. So whether it's adding some nuts to the dates you're eating to add protein and fat, or just adding like hemp parts or avocado to um, something that you're having, um, just kind of start to get in the habit of like thinking like PFF, like how can I add that to, to my meal? Um, so I just want to know, can you really thrive after breast cancer? 
you absolutely can. And if you guys are at Pink Warrior House, you are well on your way. And I'm so grateful um, that you guys um, found this place. I found out about it actually because one of my past clients um, was doing some, um, was participating in some of the programs here. And she was just like, you need to talk to Allison. She is like so on your field about like, you know, mindset and the holistic approach and all of that stuff. So that's how actually I got connected um, to this amazing group. Um, so I'm super happy to be here. Um, and, you know, I am going to drop my Instagram and some resources for how you can connect with me after, but I just wanted to share some hope because I'm not sure where you guys are all at on your journey right now, but um, these are just some of my clients who have worked with me. This is Sophie. She worked with me um, three years ago. She actually works with me now. She's a co-coach um, in my program, which is amazing. Um, Sarah, you know, just screenshots for days about people who have just like gone through the course and they just, you know, have, um, you know, just a clear path forward now that really addresses the totality of their being. So from like the day-to-day -day stuff of like, what am I eating? How am I nourishing myself to like the thoughts that kind of pour in and having um, like an outlet and like a framework to actually reframe them in a way that sets you up for like thriving, um, not just, you know, for the next like month or whatever, but like for life thereafter, like my client Sophie, who literally now like works with me because she's just like the embodiment of like living in alignment, which is so amazing. So um, I'm dropping my Instagram here. It's at I am breast cancer thriver. So anyone can connect with me there, send me a message. Um, and for um, the person who sent me that private direct message earlier, just feel free to DM me here. Um, I have a Facebook group called thriving after breast cancer. It's a free group you can join. Um, and then I also have a podcast it's called breast cancer thriver and it's on, um, like every platform that you could listen to podcasts on. So like Apple podcasts, Spotify, um, Stitcher, Google podcasts, wherever you find your podcasts, you can check it out there. Um, so there's tons of information on there about, um, what we talked about today, um, and so much more. And really a lot of the topics are on like the, the emotional wellness and really like just moving through this diagnosis and recovery in a way that um, grows you. Because I really do believe that like whatever our experiences are, whatever our circumstances are, um, we can move through them in a way that creates growth. So it was not easy to get to that point in my life, but um, I'm really grateful that I'm here now and that I have this growth mindset. So that way, no matter like what challenges lay ahead, um, I feel like emotionally available and equipped to um, be with what comes. So anyways, that's that. That's the presentation for this evening. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I will stop recording as well.